Uh, so our first speaker is uh, Clement Leno from EPFL. He'll tell us about tensor estimation. I'll let you jump right in. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so today uh, I will talk about joint work with Nicolas Macris on tensor estimation with uh, structured priors. So I will present the statistical model for tensor estimation that we consider. And I will spend a few slides presenting existing results before uh, presenting our own results. So the statistical model is uh, a classic one. Uh, you have a n-dimensional spike X. And with this spike X, you form a symmetric rank one tensor. So here we will consider a second order tensor like a matrix or a third order tensor. So your tensor is a tensor with components Xi, Xj, xk and uh, you uh, multiply this tensor by some signal to noise ratio parameterized by lambda and what you observe is a noisy version of this symmetric rank one tensor where the noise is some additive white gaussian noise and then uh, the question you ask yourself is uh, well, how can you estimate the spike x uh, or the underlying rank one tensor so this problem is now well studied, uh, well understood information theoretically and uh, algorithmically, especially for a spike whose components are uh, IID with respect to some prior distribution PX. Uh, Le Large and Mulan uh, proved uh, a formula for the minimum mean squared error in the high dimensional regime. And Lustier and collaborators uh, studied uh, the approximate message passing algorithm in the high dimensional regime. Uh, the performance of AMP is tracked by the state evolution equations. And so there's one interesting change of behavior uh, algorithmically when you go from matrix estimation to tensor estimation. So if you have a centered prior, for example, the IID Gaussian prior, for matrix est estimation, you will observe that uh, the minimum mean squared error is trivial and maximum for a low SNR until some threshold and past this threshold, it will decrease to zero. And um, there's no discontinuity at the, for the MMSC at the threshold uh, beyond which uh, the MMSC is non-trivial. And it also turns out that uh, the AMP estimator, uh, its error matches um, the error of the Bayesian estimator. So it matches the MMSC. On the contrary, if you now consider tensor estimation, uh, you will see that you still have a phase transition for the MMSC. But this phase transition is a first order first phase transition. So you have a discontinuity. And above this threshold, um, the error of the AMP estimator remains, uh, remains trivial and maximum. Uh, so in the case of matrix estimation for IID Gaussian prior, you don't have any algorithmic gap. Why for tensor estimation, you have an infinite algorithmic gap that appears. For matrix estimation, you can also have algorithmic gap, but they will be finite. For example, if you consider a Bernoulli Rademacher prior, if, uh, if the sparsity of this prior is low enough, you will have an algorithmic gap uh, that will appear. So this picture is important and I will come back to it later, but first I will present another kind of prior that has been considered uh, recently for matrix estimation. So data in nature has uh, some structure and we would like to, uh, to have a model uh, that take into account such structure and you would like to exploit this structure to see if it's possible to do better algorithmically. And especially one observation is that often high dimensional signal effectively lies on a low dimensional manifold. So recently, uh, Benjamin Aubin and collaborators uh, proposed uh, to study a prior uh, that is given by the output of a generalized linear model. So the structure comes from a generative model. So what you would have is you would have a p-dimensional latent vector whose components are still IID with some prior PS. But this latent vector is multiplied by some sensing matrix with, uh, whose components are uh, standard Gaussian. And once you have done this uh, linear operation, you will pass the vector W times S through an activation function phi that is possibly nonlinear. So S might be IID, but uh, the components of X will be um, 
will be correlated with each other. So this model was proposed by OBA and collaborators and they studied such uh, prior in the context of matrix estimation. And they studied this model in the i-dimensional limit where the ratio alpha equals n over p is kept fixed. So n is the size of the signal and p is the size of the lat lat latent vector. And this ratio is kept fixed. And they make the interesting observation that for all the cases they study, uh, the MMSC as a function of the noise variance delta, which is uh, the inverse of the, of the SNR, uh, doesn't undergo um, a first order phase transition. So the MMSC is continuous and there's no algorithmic gap with uh, generative model priors. So um, it's an interesting observation and I was wondering what happened with such uh, generative model priors in the case of tensor estimation. Especially I was wondering if we can leverage such generative priors in tensor estimation to have a finite algorithmic gap when the prior is centered. So in the remaining of this talk, I will present formulas for the asymptotic mutual information and the asymptotic minimum mean squared error for tensor estimation with uh, this generative prior. And I'll use these formulas to visualize the uh, MMSC for different settings. And uh, we'll see that unfortunately, the, uh, the infinite uh, algorithmic gap persists. And in the end, I will look uh, at this I dimensional regime in the limit where alpha goes to zero. In that case, you can write a simplified equivalent model with a IID prior. And so this equivalent model is also valid for matrix estimation and it will uh, help us um, um, exhibit activation function for which you also have an algorithmic gap uh, with, matrix with uh, matrix estimation. Um, so um, first some uh, theoretical results. So the model we consider is the following. You have a tensor Y whose components Y I G K is given by square root of lambda over N times X I X J X K plus some uh, additive white Gaussian noise Z. And so the components of the spike X comes from a generalized linear model. And what you can show is that the mutual information between, between the spike X and uh, the observation Y, given the sensing matrix W, normalized by N, will converge to a simple variational problem in the limit where N over P is fixed equals to alpha and N goes to infinity. And so this variational problem is simply the extremization of a potential function over three variables QX, QS, and RS. And the potential function is a sum of two mutual information involving uh, scalar random variables and some polynomial in the variables. So once you have this uh, result, you can use the IMMSC relation that links um, the derivative of the mutual information to the minimum mean squared error. And you will obtain a result for the asymptotic uh, minimum mean squared error. And you find that for almost every positive lambda, in the high dimensional regime, the error of the Bayesian estimator of the third tensor power of the spike X, so the MMSC, will converge to rho X cube minus Q X star cube, where uh, rho X is, um, is a second moment of the, of the components of the spike X. And, um, uh, and Q X star, is uh, QX achieving the, the minimum in, in this variational problem. So now that we have this result, we can visualize the MMSC. So to visualize the MMSC, you want to extremize the potential. You do so by uh, writing the critical point equation for the potential. It gives you a fixed point equation for the parameter QX, QS and RS. And you can iterate this fixed point equation starting from different in initialization. And in the end, you will keep the fixed point that yields the lowest potential. And you will use uh, this formula to compute the asymptotic MMSC. And so there's one interesting, uh, um, there's one interesting setting. It's when the activation function phi is odd and uh, the prior PS is centered. In this case, you have a fixed point QX equals zero that is uh, that we call an informative fixed point. It's called an informative because when QX star is zero, the asymptotic MMSC is trivial and maximum equals to rho X cube. So 
for matrix estimation with generative prior, uh, OBA and collaborators could uh, could uh, observe that in uh, in the settings they consider, this fixed point becomes unstable uh, once you pass the information theoretic threshold, and it means that there's no algorithmic gap for the configuration they study. Uh, in the case of tensor estimation with generative prior, this fixed point is always strongly stable. And so you have exactly the same algorithmic behavior uh, than, for, uh, mat than for tensor estimation with IID prior, meaning that you have an infinite algorithmic gap. So that's what you see here where uh, I've plotted the MMSC for a linear activation function and for a Gaussian prior PS for different values of alpha. And the red dashed line is um, is uh, the algorithmic uh, prediction for the error. And you see that it uh, remains trivial uh, and maximum. Otherwise, information theoretic theoretically, you exactly have the same behavior than for matrix estimation. Uh, for example, the information theoretic threshold above which the MMSC becomes non-trivial decreases with the ratio alpha. And you exactly have the same kind of pitch, picture if you know you take an activation function that is not linear, but uh, as a nonlinearity, like a sine function. And so for the, for the end of this talk, I will consider uh, the limit when alpha goes to zero. So when alpha goes to zero, it's possible to determine what is the limiting curve for the minimum mean squared error. This is the blue dashed uh, curve here. And so what you can show is that uh, when alpha goes to zero, the asymptotic mutual information is given by a simplified um, variational problem. It's a variational problem only on the parameter qx. And this is exactly the same kind of variational problem that you would get with tensor estimation with IID prior. And there are two cases. If the prior of uh, the latent vector ps uh, is centered, then, it, you have tens, then the equivalent problem is tensor estimation with the IID prior. Uh, and the prior distribution is the same distribution as the Gaussian random variable of variance rho s uh, passing through the activation function phi. If no, the prior PS is not centered, you have to take into account some side information v, but the proof by Lelarge and Yolan can be easily adapted to take into account the side information, and you can show that you have this uh, variational formula in the asymptotic uh, limit. So now you can use this simplified, uh, you can use this simplified problem, and uh, we will come back to the matrix estimation. So for matrix estimation, you exactly have the same kind of limit when alpha goes to zero. And so you see that you can choose the activation phi to obtain any equivalent IID prior that you want when alpha goes to zero, including a prior exhibiting an algorithmic gap. And so an example of such activation function would be a function phi of x that is equal to the sine of x if the absolute value of x is uh, greater than epsilon and zero otherwise. In that case, matrix estimation with generative prior is equivalent to matrix estimation with the IID Bernoulli Rademacher prior when alpha goes to zero. And you see that if epsilon is large enough, this Bernoulli Rademacher prior will be sparse. And uh, you will get exactly the kind of uh, picture I showed you uh, earlier with an algorithmic gap. So in fact, even for matrix estimation with such kind of structure, you can have algorithmic gap. However, here I considered the regime alpha goes to zero. So it means that the dimension of the latent vector is, uh, is huge compared to the dimension of the signal. So it does not correspond to the high dimensional, it does not correspond to the setting of the high dimensional signal X lying on a lower P dimensional space. Um, so uh, as a future work, I'd like to look at uh, what happens when alpha increases. Especially, does the algorithmic gap vanishes, or uh, does it completely disappear when alpha increases? And I guess uh, it's time to end here. So I will just uh, finish with a few references, uh, especially the work by Aubin and collaborators, the spike matrix model with generative priors, because uh, in this work, they also have uh, way more algorithmic consideration, uh, and they propose also a linearization of uh, AMP. Uh, 
uh, to estimate uh, the spike. And I would like to point out to the following three print tensor estimation with structured priors. If you are interested in the proof of the asymptotic mutual information and uh, the asymptotic uh, minimum mean squared error. Thank you.